But I'm very proud to uh, present Annette Meese, who's uh, the uh, co-director of the CONI, the London-based theatre company that places the audience at the heart of the performances. Uh, her keynote that will touch on mixing live performance and play with digital magic to create stories that are co-created by the audience. Very appropriate. Thank you very much. And please welcome Annette Meese. Hello. Um. Ah. One, two, quick. That's me. Uh, hello, my name is Annette. I am one of three uh, artistic co-directors of Coney. Um, this is how you can reach me later. So Coney uh, is a theatre company. We're based in London, but we're not a normal theatre company. We uh, hardly ever use a stage. We have used streets, theatres with all the seating ripped out, uh, buildings. We go into schools, uh, museums. We've made work virtually everywhere. But what are, and of course, online, um, very important in this context. Um, what is, what our, all our work has in common is that the audience is at the heart of it. They are in it. They are the most important character within every story day. It's about them. Um, they change it. It responds to them. Our stories are different every, different every single time they play out because they are made by and with the people that are there. So it never looks like this, ever. Never sitting down, looking and clapping. Uh, it's not a broadcast. It can look like this. Like this, this is a wedding in small town. These are all, every, everyone you're seeing is an audience member, by the way. Um, like this, which is an exciting uh, stage in a piece uh, that we're currently developing called Early Days for Better Nation, in which the audience builds a new uh, nation each night to explore what they think is most important about that. It can look like this, but it's always about the audience. It's about how they are experiencing the story um, that is currently going on. So we build for them, which also means that we have to build with them. Um, so we're really excited about what technology is doing. It's creating new cultural spaces. Everyone has a phone now. So many, so many of us spend so much of our time online communicating in new ways with the people we already know. It's not about... Um, entering a brave new world. It's about uh, a world with new opportunities. And this, these new cultural spaces, can be occupied by us, everyone in this room. And I think for us, that's really exciting. Um, so, for me, when I talk about the internet, there are two versions of it. One is the internet as the, what I like to call the library of the universe. Um, there is everything and anything on there. The hardest thing is to find a thing that you want to, but it's also really useful. I don't know how people had conversations before Wikipedia and Google, so you could just check your facts. Um, but the other side of the internet is all about connection. It's social media, it's Skype, it's about uh, talking to each other, it's about telling stories, and we're really excited about that part of the internet, how to connect people in the here and now, which feels very much like theatre, it's very much um, telling stories in a live space, shared experience, all of those things that we know so much about. Um, so I'm just going to briefly tell you about an experiment we did this summer, um, which is, was called Better Than Life, almost like a note to self, um, because we wanted to, we've experimented with creating a live experience um, a live interactive theatrical experience for two audiences uh, simultaneously, different but equal, um, for the audience online and an audience in the space. So both audiences were there at the same time, linking into the same story, both having agency. We talk about agency when people can change the story, talk to characters, uh, talk to each other. And we were really interested in exploring what would happen, what, 
when a live audience online showed up to connect into a live audience in the space. Um, what does that feel like? What's exciting about it? What does curtain up online look like? Um, so that was our experiment. Um, we worked in a collaboration, which I think with this kind of work is really important. So we were the artistic partner. We worked with Showcast, who are a really solid online broadcasting company. They do things like football and reality TV, uh, which is really exciting for us because they had an incredible knowledge about online platforms. And we worked with Goldsmiths University um, with uh, computing experts and experts in um, what they call telepresence, which is uh, just a very complex word about how we relate to our digital selves um, and, and our physical selves. Um, so we looked at different things. We were interested in a couple of different dimensions. We wanted to uh, give online audiences uh, access to agency in the physical space, so literally what, what would happen if they could uh, control lights or sound or uh, open doors or closed doors um, while a live audience was there. Uh, agency over perspective, so they could literally roam the world, so there were different cameras, you could, you could choose where you were, which character to follow, um, which bit of the story that you were most interested in, but then also switch between them. Uh, agency through communication, so um, they both had the opportunity to talk to each other, um, two characters at different points, to, and sometimes even to the live audience, there was a sort of direct link. Um, and then agency over how the story ends. So we wanted both audiences to de be deeply invested in the story and, the, and how the narrative ended was a reflection on what they had both done. Um, as I said, it was very much an experiment. We did lots of things wrong and some things really right as well, which is very exciting. Um, so we spent about a month in a space, in a greenhouse during a heat wave, it's not to be recommended. Um, we, in that period, uh, started with uh, a week of rehearsal, but in the second week, we already put something up on his feet and invited audiences in to come and play with us, both online and in the space. It was chaos, um, lots of technical difficulties. Um, I mostly remember running between sort of the, um, the, the live space, uh, backstage area and the, the technical area. Lots of chaos, but we did it in the, in the second week. We then, uh, in the third week, had more open rehearsals, and then the fourth week, we showed four showings, um, oh, sorry, three showings, to let everyone know where we, where we were. Um, so we wanted to learn about technology, what, what, what is out there, what's currently... Um, already possible, because with a lot of this work, something might be very interesting and exciting, but possible in three years, or never possible, or possible now. We wanted to really look at audience behavior. When were people excited? When did the online space become buzzy? When did the live space become buzzy? How did they experience each other? Um, we wanted to look at dramaturgy, so what story works? How is it told? What kind of difference is there in this sort of live experience online. And then uh, we also touched upon business models. Um, what is it? It costs more to do something like this, so is there also a bigger payoff, and what might that look like? Um, so the strongest thing that for us came out is that live events make people feel part of something bigger than themselves, and that was very true for our online audience. Um, there was a real excitement and a real buzz learning that there were lots of people from lots of different countries all there at this same thing. It's the difference between watching something at home on telly or in a cinema. It's sort of you're part of something. The, uh, the fact that the other people are there felt really interesting and exciting. Um, plus, so we had audiences from across the world. I remember uh, one performance where we had someone from Australia, someone from the Netherlands, and someone from... Canada, and it felt like we were sort of circumventing the world a little bit. It was really, really exciting. Um, and it's exciting for the audience. The thing that we also felt really worked is something that's called um, social presence. Again, um, these are our academics speaking. Social presence um, 
we start out with questions around agency. What kinds of agency is important? What kind of things do people want to do and not do? What kind of agency gets in the way? And what kind of agency makes these kinds of experience even more exciting? And what we really learned is that that is sort of the wrong question. The right pre question is around social presence. When do people feel that they are present to each other, to the peace? When do they feel that their presence has um, effect and affect on others and the narrative? That, for us, is where it gets really exciting, and that's what came out of the month that we did this summer. So for us, that's now a really cool question in moving forward into sort of live digital environments in which uh, people come together to have an artistic experience of some form. Um, so the other thing we learned is that online audiences need very different framing. So how they enter um, a world, a narrative, an event is very different from a live audience. Um, we talked about when you go to a live performance you, in, in London, you get on the tube, it's probably very crowded, you're a little bit grumpy, but then you come out, you walk there go to the bar, have a drink, you meet the people, then you go in, the lights come down, you know that that's the time to shut up, then the curtains come up, uh, some art, uh, art forms you applaud, others you don't, then it starts, then the curtain comes down, lights go up, you're allowed to talk again, bar, uh, and repeat. Um, online audiences also need a way in, a way in which they understand what the conventions are, what they're a what they can do and what, uh, what the possibilities are to find their feet before they can really dive in. So thinking about how what you're making is framed is as important about as what you're making. What's the experience in? What's the experience out? What do people need to know and feel confident about um, before they can actually engage with the art itself? There's a beautiful piece of research. I always forget its exact quotation where... Um, they took teenagers who'd never been to the theatre, I think it's American, to the theatre uh, for 15 performances and sort of talked about their experiences afterwards. They took an, on average 2.8 visits before they stopped talking about the theatre, that they weren't allowed to play with their mobile phones and this and this and that, before they started talking more about the show than they were talking about the experience about going to theatre. So entering this digital age... We are, we're dealing with audiences who need 2.8 performances before they start talking about more about the art than they do about the experience themselves. Just interesting. Um, they very need, need very different pacing. So we naively thought that uh, the online audience would be quicker. They're much slower because they can do more. They can talk to each other. They're part... Uh, they can reflect together quite actively on what's going on. So they literally needed more time because they had more freedom in their movement. Um, lovely, thank you. Um, and they need very different relationships. So some relationships are directly transferable, one-on-ones with, um, with actor characters. They're very similar, very exciting. Um, they were much more comfortable being... Uh, being, as a, being seen as a large group, but, but still feeling that they were socially present. So they, when a character responded to 50 people simultaneously, they still felt they were responded to almost on a, on a very individual, small group level, while on a live performance that feels very different. It just feels like direct address. Um, so that's really exciting. There are very different relationships. Um, so we're slowly starting to build up this real learning about what is it that people want to show up for? How do you make it exciting yet comfortable to show up for something live online? What kind of stories can you tell? And um, how do you create and how do you expand the audience experience through that? Um, in the end, though... It's also really simple because they all want the same thing still. It may need some really clever innovation on format and technology. They still just want to be part of an experience that, that is exceptional. You know, we make art, you make art. We know this. Um, so it's not 
I think sometimes when I talk to artists who venture or thinking about venture into digital or using digital, it feels like scary, it feels like a new world, but it's very, very similar to ours. It just needs a little bit of thinking and experimenting. So the amazing thing, I've got lots of cat gifts now because it's post-lunch and I thought we needed to wake, we're waking up. So the exciting thing, so as with lots of things, we are literally just scratching the surface, so nobody knows, which is... Um, so there is some really bad news, is that it is quite hard to be part of this revolution. It's quite... Um, yeah, it's that sometimes. Um, so the first thing if, is that we need to change how we work. Um, I think sometimes we're trying to put old models onto new ways of communicating with audience, new work, and we're trying to transfer what we're already doing and somehow digitize that. That doesn't work. We need to start from the ground up. And that need, means that we need to change how we make work and how we think about audiences within that making and receiving process. Um, it also means that you have to change who you work with. Uh, it means that teams need to look different. It means that uh, old hierarchies might need a little bit of shake-up um, because different knowledges need to start interlinking a lot more and from the start. Um, it also means, this is my favourite, it also means that you have to take risk. And this will happen over and over again. And and what's really important is that we need to become a little bit more comfortable with this um, because it will go wrong. Oh, it breaks my heart, that one. Um, so the good news is, is that it's also really easy to start doing this. Um, once, once you become comfortable with taking risk, with working differently, and, with wor and start working with different people, it's not rocket science. Um, sorry. So... It's pioneer territory. I always talk, I won't go into too much because I'm always, I'm running out of time already. Um, but this is Melier, uh, one of the early, early fathers of film. He made amazing films, um, which if you have never seen them, go, go watch them. This is a still from Voyage dans la Lune. It was glorious, it was cinematic, but it was also just theatre on film. Um, it took another, a long, long time before Eisenstein came along who really understood editing. Um, so it's pioneers. We can, we can look at uh, the space for people. Um, I think the other amazing news is that, and it's good, there's so much stuff out there to steal. Um, so you don't have to start by inventing the wheel. So um, you can steal our stuff, come talk to me more about what we've done. Um, but also just look at audience behaviours, what they're already doing online. Uh, there's lots of binge watching going on. So um, my favourite House of Cards on Netflix, uh, there he is. Um, people spend entire weekends just watching one thing now. And it's amazing and it's an event and people get together to do it or huddle up with a partner or family. Um, you might... I assume Nordic, you all know slow television and alarm um, events. So there is the, it's Norwegian, isn't it? The boat, the ferry that went round, people booked in for Easter Egg Live was literally uh, Channel 4 did in the UK. It was, um, I can't remember, I think it's four weeks. It was a long time, three weeks. Cameras on eggs. That's the concept. Uh, until they hatched. And people just had it on in the background of what owls, snakes, chickens, God knows what. Um, but a whole community grew around it. And one, once if an egg moved, the internet would go mental. The social media streams, everyone logged in. And God, oh God, when the first one was born, it was insane. Um, really interesting. The how-to videos. I put something there from the uh, San Francisco Ballet, who are amazing. They have rehearsals, they have warm-ups on YouTube, and the whole, they have a whole American young dancers community who warms up with them. How amazing is that? Uh, being there from the start, so there's a lot of people who really love what you are doing and want to be part of the start and are willing to pay to be part of the start and will go on you on the making journey. All of these are things that audiences are already doing. So what's really interesting for me is to think about how that applies to your organization. Thank you. How it applies to your organization. What does binge watching 
the National Theatre of Denmark, I think just spoke, what does that look like? Um, what does the how-to video of an orchestra look like? People are insanely interested in what we're doing, um, and there's lots of ways of getting them involved. Um, Brian Eno, in his, in his leopard print vest, bless him, um, talks about seniors, which I think is... God, it's so Brian Eno, but I quite like it. He, has, uh, he talks about seniors because he says um, there's a real misunderstanding about sort of the genius of the lone genius. And to create change, what you want is seen genius. Oh, God, I'm sort of slightly embarrassed. I feel it in there. Um, he talks about create a scene around what you're doing. Create a scene um, where together you're very open about what you're exploring and what you're innovating about. That, those are your colleagues, those are your organization, those are the people that already are coming. Um, when you are able to create a scene, you expand the audiences because those audiences start grabbing into each other. Uh, work with other theatres, if you make theatres or other orchestras. Um, and what's exciting about digital is that can be global now. A global scene is, is easier to create than ever in history. Come on, Brian. Oh, um, I animated Brian as well. Um, so, circles of attention. Um, I think um, I talk about this a lot, and I sort of stole it from Stanislavski. He talks a lot about circles of attention for individual actors, and I think I've started using that idea that you can be inward-looking, slightly outward-looking, further outward-looking, um, taking the entire room and then the entire world. Um, those circles of attention, you have those already. By expanding those and letting people using digital to allow people to get to know you more from wherever point they are. Don't try and get those people into the heart immediately. Try and create circles of attention and slowly uh, weave people through it. Um, and I think that you should always start with your organization. Um, I think the organization is part of a bigger social network. So your colleagues, the people that you're already, the people that are programming like you, the other orchestras that your uh, musicians work for. Um, so your organization is already in a no part of a network. So how do you connect that in? Again, digital and all these different ways are um, just are offering lots of different ways of getting, getting those networks physicalized and getting audiences through a journey that is much bigger than through the door, in, out and gone again. Um, start small. Um, I think the, the biggest mistake that I often see make is monoliths. Um, we are, again, it's a production network. You close the rehearsal room doors, go in, be there for weeks, come out, show it, and then you get reviewed. It's a very old-fashioned and um, way of working. Also, if you want to do that with technology, it's a really expensive way of working. It means that you spend all your money up front, and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, so I was talking to uh, Niels about who is here, and, and I think there's people here that um, really get digital and want to uh, and try and are trying to figure out how to implement it, and people that... Uh, so I think if you are that, my tip for you is gather data and build momentum. So start, start doing something small. Someone was talking about it's really hard to change culture. Go for low-hanging fruit. There will be problems and there will be people already willing to work with you on it. So get loads of different departments involved, the low-hanging fruit of those departments, the people that are sort of already up for it. Create data and numbers, the amount of people that engage, the depth of engagement, the people that engaged with something and then bought more tickets um, for, for what your, your core, the audience is already doing. And then build momentum. So keep iterating quite small, grow and grow and grow it. It's a real quick way to create a real change and a real way of changing minds within organizations um, to start investing more in this kind of work. So I think the most important thing is that even though all of us here are probably the smartest man or woman alive, um, is that it's really unpredictable when you build work for and which, 
for audiences, uh, in which audiences are active, in which they have a role, in which they're responsive, in which you want to hear from them. Don't make anything interactive you don't want to hear or comes back, by the way. Um, it means that if they have such an important role, you have to iterate. So start small, build, build, build. Um, let your audience in, open up your process. You can't just show the finished thing because you can't make the finished thing without them being part of it. Um, this is another amazing thing. Your audience has an audience. Um, so there are a lot of people already talking about you in in the public digital space in lots of different ways. They're blogging about you, they're, t they're Instagramming about you, they're tweeting about you. Uh, there are probably clubs online that talk about you on forums and then go and visit you together. These people already are existing. So make it easy for people who love you to talk to other, to convince other people that you are amazing. So I think this is what, if you start thinking about what this means for your organization, if just one thing, do this. Think about your audience that already has an audience and how you can make it easy for them to talk to their audience about how amazing you are. Um, it is and will always remain always about the audience. Um, to start with them, I think it was mentioned in one of the breakout session reflections is sometimes people get caught off in what they want to say Start thinking about the questions you want to explore with them. It's about them, and they'll come back with amazing, amazing responses, and you can build from there. Um, it's about experiencing stories. It's about your organization as, a, as an experience as a whole, about the stories that are within that, the themes you want to explore. Audiences love it. They just want to be part of it. They want to be... They want to feel that they are part of your story and that you're listening to them. Um, it's about expanding and transforming the connections that you already have. Um, there are, you, you already have it. You just have now an incredibly new, uh, incredible array of new tools to really start building upon it, to really create deeper connections, new connections, and to connect the different nodes that are circling in and around your organization already. That's it for me. Please come and find me. I've never been to Iceland. Um, I'm here till the end of Wednesday, and I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to the next couple of days. Thank you very much.